Hello, my name is Patrick Flanagan, and this video lecture is for the job application for um, physics professor at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. So I'm going to be talking about static friction today, and before I do that, I want to quickly go over Newton's three laws of motion, because they're relative, relevant for this. The first law is that an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by a force, and the second law, and an object at rest will stay at rest unless acted on by a force. The second law is that the sum of all forces on an object equals its mass times acceleration. And the third law is that when two, force, two objects are in contact, the force of one on the other is equal and opposite in magnitude. Now, when in everyday life, we're familiar with a lot of different forces. We have gravity, we have some electrical forces, we have magnetic forces, we have you know, push and pull, and we also have friction. There's two types of friction, there's static and kinetic. Static is when the object in question is not moving, and kinetic is when the object is moving. So an example of static friction would be this here. So this is my object, and if I push it against the wall, it's not moving. So even though I'm pushing in horizontally, the static friction force is pulling up vertically because it has to, the friction force has to balance out the force of gravity in order to keep the object stationary. So I take what I just did and draw a free body diagram. So here's the wall. Here's my coordinate system. Y, X. Here's my object. So I have my hand, the applied force pushing in. I have the wall, the normal force pushing in. And there's gravity pulling down, MG. And there's going to be a frictional force Pointing up. So the friction force is bound, bounces out the gravity force equally so that there's no acceleration up or down. So remember Newton's second law is this. The sum of all forces is mass times acceleration. So if you look at the x part, in the x direction you've got the applied force to the left, normal force to the right, and they balance out to give zero. In the y direction, you've got the friction force up and gravity down, and they balance out to give zero. So in this particular case, the friction force is equal to mg. But in general, the expression we'll be using is that the friction, static friction force is given by this equation here. Less than or equal to mu fn. So you can see why I'd be using the less than or equal to sign, because I can change how hard I'm pushing in, but it doesn't change the force that's going up or down. I can push in lightly, like this, as long as it's strong enough, or I can push in hard, like this, and it doesn't change the fact that um, the friction force is going to hit the upper limit of the friction force, it's just mg in this problem. That's why we use the less than or equal to sign. Now, mu is a, depends on the, the nature of the two objects that, you're, um, that are in contact. If there's no simple equation that can get mu for any object in general. You just have to do a trial by error and guess what works best. And at the end of the lecture, I'm going to do a little a demonstration of how you can get mu for any pair of objects using a pretty simple experiment. So, friction occurs because when you actually look at an object, no matter how flat it appears, there's always going to be some sort of roughness to the surface. The two, so when the objects are moving or trying to move relative to each other, the bumps on the surface kind of prevent it from moving smoothly. So an object with um, that's very rough will have a higher value for mu, and an object that's smooth will have a smaller value for mu. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take another system. I'm going to draw an inclined plane at an angle theta. And I'm going to put an object here of mass m. And I'm going to tilt my coordinate system so that it's aligned with the incline. So y will be here, x will be here. So you can imagine that we have a surface that you can tilt up or down as needed. And you can imagine that when the surface is totally flat, the object will just not move. 
But as you tilt it higher and higher and higher, eventually you'll get to a point where the octopus start to move. And so the idea is that if we can find the point, the value of theta, the angle at which it just about starts to move, that will be our value for the, that can give us a value for the coefficient of static friction. So if we do the free body diagram for the system, with the normal force of the block, the inclined plane pushing up, we've got gravity going down, and friction should be going upwards to prevent it from the block from going downwards. So in this setup here, I have to decompose the gravity force into its two components. Using a little trig, you can see that this is theta, which means that this guy here is going to be mg cosine theta, and this guy here is going to be mg sine theta. So now I'll do Newton's second law again. The x part going this way. So I've got this part here pushing in the positive direction, so that's going to be mg sine theta, and I've got friction going upwards, so that will be negative here. And I'm trying to find the point at which it's just about to start to accelerate, but it's not accelerating, so the acceleration will be zero. In the y direction, I have the normal force, the incline pushing up, and I have this component of gravity, mg cosine theta, going down. And along the y direction, there's also no acceleration, so this is zero. And since I'm at the cusp of the highest amount of static friction, I don't have to use the less than or equal to sign. I can just say that the friction force is equal to mu times Fn. So mu is what we're trying to find. It's the, no matter what material for the block or the incline you're using, this process that I'm going to show you will give you a way to find mu. So we have three equations here, and that's enough to solve everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this guy into here. So that leads to mg sine theta equals mu fn. Then we're going to put this guy into here, which is going to lead to mg sine theta equals mu mg cosine theta. So you can see there's an mg on both sides. They cancel. So you actually don't need to know the mass of the block to do this experiment. And if you complete everything, the answer you'll get is this. Tan, equal, um, tan theta equals mu. So this gives us a very simple way to find mu for any pair of objects. You just take your incline plane and keep tilting it and tilting it, and the angle at which it's just about to start moving, you plug it into this formula, and that'll give you mu. So that's it for today. That's just a very, very brief introduction to static friction. There's lots of different applications. Um, and there's uh, kinetic friction is not that different. It's similar, but it's a, another topic we'll get into later. So that's it for today, and thank you for watching. Done.